This is Dial M for Medic, Episode 3. Hi everyone, welcome back. Nice to see you. This is Fina, and in this episode, we are going to be discussing supplies for a street medic. So the first thing you will need is a tire. You need to have a red cross clearly visible on your clothes, bag, hat, etc. so both police, EMT, and protesters know you are a street medic. Be upfront with your experience and credentials. If you haven't formally been educated in the role of a medic through street medic training or through, say, nursing, EMT, physician, etc., then that's okay, but be forthcoming. Don't work above your station. A general rule is that you should not leave too much exposed skin out, as this can make you susceptible to injury from cuts, but also to sunburn. Likewise, if it's raining, grab a hat, umbrella, or poncho. Carrying your gear is a little different based on your needs, but in general, a backpack will work or perhaps a fanny pack for the little things. A small duffel bag, like one you would take to the gym, can also come in handy, but make sure it's waterproof. Don't get lost in the shuffle though. Make sure your most used items are the most easily accessible and packed in clear plastic bags or containers for the sake of visibility. Oh, and just as a reminder, though I'm sure you guys all know this already, no weapons, please. So the second thing you'll need to bring with you as a street medic are personal items. First and foremost, take some snacks with you. Energy bars, granola, trail mix, etc. Try not to have perishable goods like yogurt unless you can hold them securely in a climate controlled bag. Water is, of course, your best friend. A squirt bottle is preferable. Sunscreen, mineral-based instead of oil-based, is recommended, as you don't want to trap any chemicals under your skin, as we've talked about before. No makeup either. Take care to wear eye protection and remove contacts. If you need a map of the area but don't want to use Google Maps due to tracking concerns, use OpenStreetMaps app and download a map of your area or the area that you'll be at for the demonstration. Write a phone number for an attorney somewhere on your body. Keep some spare clothes in a bag and bring a trash bag for disposing of contaminated clothes. And just to be safe, try to get a biohazard bag. Like I stated in my previous videos, communication lines will often be monitors, so try not to use your phone unless you have to. Though, this applies more so to people doing black bloc and more militant protesting because they will generally be discussing things that are probably either less than legal or just something that would piss off the cops enough for them to be targeted. But, if you need to use your phone, I would only use it for an emergency contact. If you must, though, you can use Briar in session to talk securely. However, having a walkie-talkie handy can be very pragmatic and practical. Last but not least, a flashlight is necessary for nighttime protest, and it may also be useful to have a pen light to observe a person's mucous membranes and eyes in low light. So third on our list of supplies, or just general tips and practices, is, well, what was the topic of my last video, basically, and this is chemical weapon defense. Since we went over these heavily in the last set of videos, this is just a quick rundown as a refresher. So gas masks can be used, but they're less accessible, hot, and bulky. That being said, they offer more protection against potent gases. No matter if you're getting safety glasses or whatever else, the lenses must be shatterproof. Otherwise, if something impacts the lenses, those broken shards are going to embed themselves right into your skin and eyes. Get a face mask, N95, etc. If you need extra protection, 
soak it in vinegar to allow it to absorb aerosolized particles of pepper spray and tear gas. Be aware of facial recognition software when you're out in the streets and look around for cameras. Water is best for eye washes and also in reference to eye washing, law can be used, which is liquid antacid and water. You want to use plain or flavorless liquid antacid and water. And you pour this into the edges of someone's eye from the innermost corner and have them tilt their head. For further treatment, use rubbing alcohol or mineral oil to wipe off the pepper spray. Use a cloth to apply and gently wipe. Do not moisten the cloth beforehand and make sure to keep it dry. Get the cloths, or you know, dry hand towelettes, in bulk and keep them in a separate bag. So our fourth area of concern for this video will be first aid. And this will also be just a quick one rundown of the items to have on hand. Please note, you may not need all of these items all of the time, especially given certain weather conditions. Check to see the forecast and opt to leave some stuff at home. Don't carry too much as it may reduce your movement and speed when you're in the field. So here is our list. Bandages. Bandages can be waterproof or not, but note that waterproof ones stick far longer and are harder to remove. Gauze, square or triangle, and triangle gauze can be used as a splint. Roll-on bandages. Chest seals, but this one really depends on your level of training. EMS personnel use this regularly, but it really is only for deeper penetrating chest wounds that you probably won't see so much out of protest unless it gets really violent. This is one I would caution people not to try and use unless they have some kind of EMS training. Medical tape. Note that some are meant to be applied to skin and others to bandages, though essentially you can get dual use out of most of them. Hot and cold packs. Antiseptics, and these can be either chlorhexidine or povidone iodine. Gloves, latex or non-latex, but be cautious as some people are allergic to latex. Best to err on the side of caution and get non-latex since both options are cheap and ubiquitous. To maintain sterility, keep a pair or two in a separate bag if you need to get into a wound and don't want to contaminate. And now, for some equipment that you may find yourself needing in the field. Trauma shears. Scissors and forceps. A thermometer, which can be temporal or ear. Try to avoid oral thermometers during the time of COVID. A stethoscope. A blood pressure cuff if you know how to use it. You can also buy an automated one that you just slap on someone's wrist if you want to. Though do be aware those sometimes can be inaccurate and you may want to use a manual cuff depending on the situation in the person. And lastly, for the supplies list, if you are an EMT, you may also want to bring tools for opening up someone's airway. But again, this one is especially if you are an EMT because uh, lay people are not going to know how to do this safely, <laughs> so uh, I would not. And above all, as a final message, if you don't know how to use something and it's not intuitive, going back to my last point about the airway tools, um, please ask a trained street medic or someone else trained in first aid for assistance. This doesn't really go for something, as I said, that's intuitive. Like if you're just putting a band-aid on a cut, everybody can do that, not a big deal. But you don't have to be the Red Cross at all times, and some injuries are just going to be above your pay grade. And there's nothing wrong with that. Let the professionals with the better equipment and more money 
take over. Do what you can, but do it safely. Thank you guys so much for listening and watching this episode. I'm really happy to be here with you guys again, and I really hope I will see you guys again soon. I know this episode was shorter, and it was a bit more of a collation of the previous episodes, but I just wanted to put it together as kind of a quick rundown, a little reference list, you know, something like that. Anyway, I'll see you guys soon. Take care, and goodbye.